Welcome to Med Madness, your go-to podcast for all things medical. Today we dive into atrial fibrillation, a common and clinically significant cardiac arrhythmia. It's crucial for medical students to understand this condition as it plays a significant role in cardiovascular health and management. In this episode, we will cover what atrial fibrillation is, its causes and risk factors, pathophysiology, symptoms, diagnosis, management and treatment options. We will also discuss a case study to illustrate real-world application. Next, let's discuss what atrial fibrillation is. Atrial fibrillation, or AF, is the most common type of cardiac arrhythmia characterized by an irregular and often rapid heart rate. This condition can lead to various complications, including stroke and heart failure, making it essential to understand its mechanisms and management. AF occurs when the heart's atria beat irregularly, disrupting the normal flow of blood into the ventricles. Patients often present with an irregular pulse, and an ECG typically shows irregularly irregular RR intervals without organized P waves. Instead, tiny, irregular fibrillatory waves might be present, indicating chaotic atrial activity. Next, let's talk about the causes and risk factors of atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation develops due to a variety of factors, including atrial dilation and remodeling, which can result from advanced age, systemic hypertension, mitral valve dysfunction, left ventricular failure, coronary artery disease, obesity, obstructive sleep apnea, and chronic hypoxic lung disease, such as COPD, there are also triggers of increased automaticity, such as hypothyroidism, excessive alcohol use, increased sympathetic tone, acute illnesses like sepsis, pulmonary embolism, myocardial infarction, cardiac surgery, and sympathomimetic drugs like cocaine. Now let's explore the pathophysiology of atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation typically develops in the context of atrial remodeling, which involves structural and conduction system changes due to aging or comorbidities. This remodeling makes the atria prone to ectopic electrical foci, commonly originating from the pulmonary veins. These ectopic foci can trigger irregular atrial contractions, therapeutically disrupting the myocardial tissue around the pulmonary vein ostia via catheter-based radiofrequency ablation can isolate these ectopic foci and help manage AF. Moving on, let's discuss the symptoms and clinical presentation of atrial fibrillation. Common symptoms of atrial fibrillation include palpitations, dyspnea, fatigue, chest pain, lightheadedness, and weakness. Patients may present asymptomatically or with the aforementioned symptoms. A rapid ventricular rate sustained over weeks can lead to tachycardia-induced cardiomyopathy, characterized by left ventricular dilation and dysfunction, which is usually reversible with appropriate rate or rhythm control. Now let's outline the diagnosis of atrial fibrillation. Diagnosing atrial fibrillation involves several methods, including clinical examination, where an irregular pulse and auscultation are noted, electrocardiogram, or ECG, which shows irregularly irregular RR intervals and absence of organised P waves, ambulatory ECG monitoring for intermittent arrhythmias, echocardiogram to assess underlying structural heart disease, laboratory tests such as serum, TSH and free T4 to rule out hypothyroidism, and the CHA2DS2VS score to assess thromboembolic risk. Next, let's talk about the management and treatment of atrial fibrillation. Treatment for atrial fibrillation focuses on rate or rhythm control and prevention of thromboembolism. For rate control strategy, medications such as beta blockers, non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers, and digoxin are used, along with anticoagulation to prevent thromboembolic events. For rhythm control strategy, options include electrical cardioversion, pharmacologic antiarrhythmics like flacainide and amiodarone, and radiofrequency ablation for refractory cases, with anticoagulation having similar indications as rate control. Lifestyle modifications are also important, including weight loss, treatment of underlying conditions such as obstructive sleep apnea, and reducing alcohol intake. Preventive measures include managing hypertension and other cardiovascular risk factors, as well as regular monitoring and follow-up. Now, let's consider a real-world example to illustrate these concepts. A 65-year-old male presents with several weeks of dyspnea and fatigue. His ECG shows no clear P waves and an irregularly irregular rhythm consistent with atrial fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response, 
Upon evaluation, he has a CHA2DS 2 VASC score of 3, indicating the need for anticoagulation. He has started on a beta blocker for rate control and apixaban for stroke prevention. Over the next few weeks, his symptoms improve significantly, and a follow-up echocardiogram shows resolution of left ventricular dilation, indicating successful management of tachycardia-induced cardiomyopathy. In summary, atrial fibrillation is a complex but manageable condition. Early diagnosis and appropriate management, including both rate and rhythm control strategies, are crucial for preventing complications such as stroke and heart failure. Medical students and practitioners must be adept at recognising and treating this common arrhythmia. Don't forget to engage with our pre- and post-podcast quizzes to test your understanding of atrial fibrillation. Thank you for joining us on Med Madness. Stay tuned for our next episode, where we will explore another fascinating medical topic. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels and check out our YouTube channel for more detailed content. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, feel free to reach out. Until next time, stay healthy and stay informed.